Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch Project Podcast. It's May 25th, 2022, 5.32 p.m. where I'm at. And time may vary wherever you're at, or whatever dimension you're in. Welcome back. This, in the, tonight's uh, podcast, I haven't done one in a while, but I saw a movie the other night called Infinite. It's a 2021 movie with Mark Wahlberg and many other celebrities, and uh, it is essentially a movie about the reincarnation soul trap. It is also a very clever, louche propaganda um, Matrix promotion movie. It's it's really a propaganda piece for the Matrix, but it does reveal a lot of interesting things in the fiction that we can talk about and uh, why it's worth watching. It's a really well-made, good movie, and... Uh, I will be giving you some spoilers about it, but nothing that you won't be able to figure out on your own. Uh, Watching a movie for about 20, 25 minutes, you'll be able to figure out exactly what's going on and where the movie's headed and who will most probably win the battle. Okay, before we get into all that, uh, on Friday, May 27th at about 7 p.m., I should be, if everything goes according to plans, be back live with Mark on Forever Conscious Research channel. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below, so check that out. Also, don't forget to check out rainstrickbylight.com website, where there's essentially an omnibus of information related to the weird game of life reincarnation soul trap that we're involved with and my chat and my uh, website uh, overwatchproject.com lots of links uh, to everything overwatch project and uh, don't forget to check out the links section the book section endless material for you to research with um so this will require me to give you some spoilers so alert if you haven't seen the movie and you absolutely want zero spoilers then uh, come back and watch the rest of this later if uh, you keep in mind that the spoilers I'm going to give you to uh, I'm going to give you uh, are necessary for my analysis of this movie but also I am leaving out some plot twists and plot um, things in the story that uh, don't really have anything to do with my analysis about it is a reincarnation soul trap movie and yet uh, work, they work into the story really well and um, you may or may not figure them out as you're watching the movie but uh, I'll leave that out so I'm not going to spoil everything in this review so keep that in mind okay so let's get into it so the other night I sat down and watched Infinite 2021 movie of Mark Wahlberg this movie is available to watch at no extra cost if you are already subscribed to Paramount Plus streaming service it, or if you're an Amazon uh, Prime member you can rent or buy the movie you can uh, probably get it on DVD I'm sure and you can also get it from wherever you get movies from depending on your skill level so um, the movie plot is fascinating I, I knew from the trailer that the movie dealt with reincarnation that there's a group of people in the plot that remember their other past lifetimes, all the talents, everything they've learned lifetime to lifetime. This um, is kind of a first. I don't remember a movie ever doing this in such depth and having it as the entire plot of the whole movie. But um, the movie also does very clever things of how it makes the bad guys the bad guys and how it makes the good guys the good guys and how the, uh, you know, it, it really does do uh, some kind of deception by omission or it doesn't explore certain things. Uh, and therefore the movie does have its intentional flaws, I think, because in the end it's about the pro reincarnationists uh, defeating the anti reincarnationists. So let me give it, break it down to you that the Mark Wahlberg is a car- is one of these re- reincarnation rememberers. Now, the, according to the movie's plot uh, points, there's about 500 people on Earth that when they hit puberty, they will regain all of their past life memories, including all their skill sets, talents, everything they've learned lifetime to lifetime. And, of course, that makes these 500 people truly um, knowledgeable. 
but they they don't seem to be able to stop the reincarnation cycle that they're in. Nor does this movie ever address what happens to them in between incarnations. Um, they seem to jump from death right into the next lifetime. So there's really no much gap for these particular group of people in the movie. The um, thing is that the um, this group of 500 has divided themselves into a very neat dialectic. So uh, again, propaganda, they're giving you, there's always just the two choices, you know, they have to give you that, they can't have you have third or fourth choice or consider any other options. But the movie has this thing where it uh, basically splits these groups into two. So the one group is called the believers. The believers um, are pro reincarnation. They think that their memories are a gift that they're here to help humanity and um, they are here uh, to do good works. The other group uh, ironically is called nihilists, which is kind of like an incorrect label for them. They're really just anti reincarnationists. They have come to the conclusion that they just caught kind of like in a vicious cycle of never ending um, cycle of reincarnation and that, uh, Nothing really good ever comes of it. And so they would like to end the entire reincarnation process. Now, they've invented a device, which you'll, you'll learn about in the movie. But essentially, this device is a device that will, for lack of a better description, erase DNA. And essentially eliminate all life of any kind on Earth, in the, in the Earth realm. So that absolutely nothing can incarnate here at all. So this will remove plants, fish, all mammals, including humans, uh, everything, birds, you name it. It's just gone. Reptiles, everything. Anything and all life that uses DNA as a um, um, building code, gone. This is quite drastic. Now, the movie doesn't address several things, or it does so in such a manner as to either blow them off or try to make you overlook them. The, the, the so-called nihilist plan has a flaw, of course, a big flaw. They never address the flaw in the movie. Uh, who made the Earth realm? Why does the Earth reincarnation system exist in the first place? This never gets answered in the movie. The other thing is that uh, uh, clearly... There is like a 30 second scene where it's considered that they know that somebody made this whole reality. And um, the character that plays uh, Bathurst 2020, that's his name in the movie, you'll recognize him from Doctor Strange. Uh, he is the, what the movie has decided as the antagonist, and Mark Wahlberg is the protagonist. Um, these two characters are different than the uh, regular reincarnation um, rememberers because Bathurst, his character, has a issue where uh, one of the reasons he switched sides from believer to nihilist is because he does not wait, have to wait till puberty to regain his memories. They start coming back to him in the womb. To him, this is torture. He goes over this lifetime after lifetime, and he can't make it stop. He wants to, he's essentially become sort of the de facto leader of the nihilists, and he really wants to eliminate uh, any way for anything to, any, any spirit to incarnate on Earth realm. Mark Wahlberg, on the other hand, in this particular incarnation, has sustained a head injury when he was a young man. And because of that head injury, he has never actually fully regained his reincarnation memories um later um artisan this character here um revives his memories using technology that they've developed the um thing is that mark Wahlberg in the beginning of the movie thinks he's uh, schizophrenic or psychotic he takes medication to try to control these visions and flashbacks he keeps happening that are all chaotic and uh, he thinks he's crazy Later, he finds out what's really going on. And then, of course, they set off to stop 
the evil anti-incarnationists. <laughs> anyway, um, they also have a weapon. The Nihilists have a weapon in this movie that uh, is supposedly some kind of soul trap. So it's like a shotgun that fires a specific round that if it hits one of these, uh, if it kills you, it also imprisons your spirit inside some kind of containment chamber. So that it kind of like, instead of allowing their enemies to reincarnate again, they've eliminated many of them off the, off the uh, bo battle board, so to speak, by trapping them in kind of like a limbo. There's a point in the movie where they all get liberated. But um, until that happens, the believers have fewer people than the nihilists because of that weapon. The um, interesting part about the movie is, like I said, never, never really addressed. And it's also the fatal strategy of the nihilists. Because if you were to, you know, be one of their group members or whatever, and this is what you were trying to do, it's a, it has a fatal flaw. Even if you were to accomplish this uh, victory of ending reincarnation this way, without actually understanding where the Earth uh, plane came from and where, um, why we reincarnate here in the first place, a.k.a. Lush Farm, um, Without understanding that, uh, wiping it out uh, is kind of like uh, wiping out an ant colony, uh, but leaving the queen alive. Uh, eventually, the they'll just make another ant colony. Without understanding who, what, how, or why the Earth Loosh Farm was made, eliminating the Earth Loosh Farm will simply leave it open for a new one to be made. So, really, that is a, a flawed strategy. There is only one brief attempt in this movie to try to understand the source of creation of Earth. And that is by the character Bathurst, where he, in a very short scene, he um, has himself waterboarded repeatedly to try to create an existential event so that he can, um, so that he can uh, see the face of God, quote unquote. I guess so he can understand why the system is the way it is and who made it and why it works like, like it works. And that's the only part of the movie where that's even briefly addressed. And, of course, there's never any answer given and he's never granted any supernatural extra body, uh, you know, OBE experience into the uh, astral or wherever he would go to meet uh, someone from somewhere that made the Lush farm. So that's pretty much the gist of the movie. Um, definitely worth watching. Very well made movie, of course. What You know, they have a lot of money today to make these movies. And special effects were really awesome. Lots of interesting stunts. There is a... Um, obvious clue in the movie early on as to where the missing weapon is. See, the movie actually doesn't start off in the present. It starts off in the last incarnation when uh, Mark uh, Wahlberg's character Evan is uh, living his life in his previous incarnation as this guy named Treadway. Tread Treadway is uh, fighting with a earlier version of Bathurst. I love how they have it here so that you can see Bathurst here is a completely different person than Bathurst here. Here's the current Bathurst in 2020, and here's what he was like in 1985. Um, so the, these reincarnations are, uh, you know, you, you definitely change your appearance, a lifetime to lifetime. Very interesting. So... Um, these two characters here basically die in the 80s, and then um, by 2021, they are added again in different bodies. And uh, where in, uh, in this battle here, the weapon, which is a tiny egg like, uh, egg shaped device that uh, will eliminate all life everywhere, period, is uh, hidden somewhere. And there's a clue that should be rather obvious as to where it actually is hidden very early in the movie if you're paying attention. I'm not going to tell you about it or where it is or anything, but it's kind of obvious. I thought it was obvious to me. So, 
at any rate, um, the um, action is good. The stunts are good. Special effects are good. And the story is good, except it's slanted. You see, they are really out to very cleverly make the anti-reincarnation is evil. They're the bad guys in this movie. The ones who want to stop the reincarnation soul trap, the constant reincarnation system are evil. And the ones that want to keep it going because it's for everyone's good, you see, they're the good guys. The movie in the end is a propaganda piece for reincarnation. But uh, with that in mind, and if you understand that, you can still watch the movie and see how it tries to manipulate people and see what it's showing you about uh, reincarnation, but also reveals the amount of learning we could have achieved if, if the reincarnation system was really about learning, where you would, yeah, you would have a new existence under a new uh, body, new, new personality, new beginning until you're about uh, your teenage years. <clears throat> and then you would be able to regain everything back from all your other lifetimes. That would actually make total sense. It wouldn't make total sense to remember everything from birth, and it certainly wouldn't make total sense to keep everything all fragmented. I hope my little chihuahua is out there barking at something. Anyway, um, it would make sense, and it would. It, this movie ha does uh, kind of fall short of its propaganda by showing you that if you did remember like they do remember in this movie, the amount of skills and knowledge that you would acquire here would be uh, unlimited. So um, that's it for this uh, video. And please check out uh, Friday. It should be on um, Mark's channel if everything goes according to plans. I'll see you then. Um, thanks for tuning in. Talk to you later.